half in the bag. I just tend to like human beings and I want them to be happy. Uh, so I don't torture them too much. Oh, Mike, the CDC says we can take our masks off now. Huh? Ah, uh, but just last week, Dr. Fauci said that wearing three to six masks was something that we should do. I don't know anymore. Well, are the cases going down? I don't know. I mean, they must be since they're not reporting the death toll every minute of every day anymore. Well, what's the current infection rate? I have no idea. I just know that they said we don't have to social distance anymore and everything's starting to open up again. Well, I guess coronavirus is over then. Well, not really. I mean, you still have to wear your mask some places, like the doctor's office, on an airplane. Uh, adult video stores? That's a very specific place. Well, it, it, it just, I don't know. I, it seemed like you were going to say that next. Uh, I, uh, I don't know about that, but, but some retailers say you have to wear masks. Hmm. Some do. Like... What about Target? No mask. Walmart? No mask. Grocery stores like Albertsons? Yes, mask. Uh, Sam's Club? No mask. Costco? Only if you're Ricky Schroeder. He went from silver spoons to plastic ones. Uh, Walgreens? Yes, mask. Wahlburgers? No mask, unless you're Vietnamese. CVS Pharmacy? Yes, mask, if it's a standalone store. No mask if it's inside a Target. Or no mask in Target until you get close to the CVS inside Target. Then yes mask. Nice and simple. Well, what about something like Disney World? No mask outside, but yes mask inside. You can take off your mask for eating, but only if you're eating outdoors. If you're eating indoors, it's mask on, but then off when you're taking bites, then back on again. Can you drink through your mask with a beverage? No mask. I mean, yes mask. And lastly, if Mickey Mouse gets close to you, then yes, mask. For sure, yes, mask. You know all those people in costumes are perverts, right? Right. Allegedly. Who is vaccinated now? Who is immune? I don't know. Nobody knows. Is coronavirus still everywhere or is it nowhere? I have no idea. What if someone who isn't vaccinated walks into a place without a mask on? Should I trust them? Of course, always trust strangers. That's how I got now, Jay, I hear that baseball games and concerts are ramping up again. Will I have to wear a mask when I go by myself to see Billy Joel? No, if the concert is outdoors, yes, if it's indoors, depending on the state. Some states require masks and some don't. Some states ask you to socially distance indoors and others don't. Well, Jay, what about our most favorite place in the world, the movie theater? Who cares? In fact, reports show that the most socially distant event of the entire pandemic has been the new Angelina Jolie movie. You didn't even know there was one, did you? Uh, well, thank God for Netflix. You wanna watch that new movie, Army of Darkness? Don't you mean Land of the Dead? Yeah, whatever. It's two and a half hours. So all I need is some, some time to pass until I get buried in the ground. <laughs> that's all we, uh, that's all we, roll the clip. Mr. Ward, how would you like to make $50 million? America's director, Zack Snyder, is back. And no, it's not with a heavily re-edited version of a film he already shot. It's now a heavily re-edited version of a film he already shot. Why, it's Army of the Dead. Everything's come full circle for Zack and the Zombies, going way back to his first big movie, the 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead. Although this time, it's no longer Milwaukee in ruins. It's Las Vegas. Zombies have taken over the city and a crack team have to go inside, whatever. Kablamo, Jay. Uh, but how much did you hate the film? The, um, I, I'm not just gonna say what'd you think. I just want to know, like, on a scale of one to ten. You know? uh, I didn't hate it that much. I thought it was the most despicable, boring, f filthy piece of trash I've ever seen. Hey, it's a pretty competent remake of Aliens. I wanted to talk about that. That's that's. I don't know if anyone else has talked about that, but that's. I was thinking that through the whole movie. It's like. 
It's like when a kid copies someone else's homework and changes it just a little bit. You know, Burke, I don't know which species is worse. You don't see them fucking each other over for a goddamn percentage. At least within these walls, the rules are clear. You don't see them fucking each other over. Compris? It's a fun concept, and it's sporadically fun, but it rarely uh, utilizes its premise in a way that's satisfying. Right. Because it's about these, these guys going into... To, uh, and gals. And gals. Uh, going in to, to, to take money out of a, a safe in zombie-ridden Las Vegas. And there's one part when they're trying to get to the safe and there's those things on the floor that set off like traps that are like security measures and they send a zombie down the path to do it instead to trigger off all the things. And like, like darts go into his head and they, they warm up a, a hand in a microwave so it's like hot so it, they, the zombie thinks it's you know, still alive because it has body heat. And that was the one scene where I was like, okay, they're robbing a, a, a safe in Las Vegas that's full of zombies. That's the one scene that really utilizes that. Uh, the only spark of cleverness in the entire film. Yeah. See, that, that's, that's the thing. It's like, uh, if you took two movie genres, uh, you take, say, the Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead from 1978, and you take something like Ocean's Eleven, Obviously, this reminds me a lot of that because it's the exact same premise. <laughs> a crack team of people go to rob the safe at the Bellagio, I, I believe, in the first one. Um, I'm talking about the Brad Pitt, uh, George Clooney remake. Uh, and that's the, the premise, but you, you vacuum out all the cleverness and then you, you remove all the, the interesting zombie elements from the 1978 movie and you just make it a dull, like, shoot, shoot them up first person video game shooter that's thing. It, that's another Where thing it, there's no like there's no tension there's every every shot they they shoot hits a zombie in the head yeah and well like, and all the all the human characters are so stock yeah they try to give a little bit to dave batista who i thought he was pretty good in this he's very stoic but i didn't think he was like wooden um, but they give him the, the stock father-daughter relationship that all these type of movies have. Um, but I, I liked him in the movie, too, so that's I, another positive. I did not like him in the movie. Oh. I don't know much about Dave Bautista. I know he plays Drax in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't dislike Dave Bautista as a person. I just think he, his performance is kind of wooden. He works perfectly as Drax. Oh, sure. Uh, that dry, he's never in on the joke. He's never in that joke. It's very dry. Um, Although you could say Zack Snyder's never in on the joke either. No. <laughs> uh, there, yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it, the acting was like adequate and everybody else wasn't very good. Well, except for Tignataro, and we'll talk about that. See, I was going to say, yeah, we'll talk about that. I guess if anyone doesn't know, she wasn't in the original shoot. Uh, it was Chris... Delia? Delia? De Delio? Delio? Some, some hat comedian that I had never heard of until it came out that he was a sex pest. Um, <laughs> sex, sex pest. Um. I, d I don't know any of the details. Uh, I I'm vaguely aware of what happened with him. Yeah. We're not informed enough on the guy. We're not informed but enough. Uh, the people involved with the movie decided, hey, we want to distance ourselves from him. They shot Tignataro in front of a green screen and replaced him for the whole movie. So her performance comes across like someone that was shot entirely in front of a green screen without any context as to what's happening around her. Right. I hate my life so deeply. If I had $2 million, my life would change drastically. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Tig and Taro is very funny. I li liked her show. It was called One Mississippi. I, th I don't know if it's still. I think they stopped making it. Well, the, she walked away from it after because it was produced by Louis C.K. Oh, so, God. so many enough, sex pests. So many sex pests. Yeah, but that was a good show. She's funny. Her stand up is funny. Uh, but uh, she's not a great actress. In fact, it, it's almost like, I don't know, like she just doesn't care. Well, that's what that's what makes it the best part of the movie. Yeah, that, that kind of sarcastic performance. She's not good at acting, <laughs> but that's what's great about it. It's yeah. like it, it almost feels like 
when, I don't know, like they used to do this for the Oscars or the MTV Movie Awards, you know what I'm talking about. When, yeah, they, yeah. when they shoot the fake scene for like a real movie and they put the comedian in and there. They put Billy Crystal, they superimpose him yeah. into the shot. And there's something, maybe something a little more more contemporary, Jay, than Billy Crystal. But That's what I always think yeah, of. Yeah, you know, we'll say more modern comedians. They, they put them into the shot and they digitally put them in and they make the lighting perfect and they cut them into the scene. Uh, that's what every shot with Tig Notario in this felt like, like yeah. a joke. Yeah. Like she didn't belong in the movie, and that's what that was the best part. I take it back, not zero, zero attributes. <laughs> um, because she's just like, eh, well, I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to fly the helicopter. What, I don't know what's going on. And, and maybe she didn't know what was going on. It's quite possible. Helen's back. Get behind the car. Go behind the car. But she she was integrated pretty well though. It never like I because I kept looking at it. I kept getting distracted because yeah. I wasn't engaged by the story. So I kept looking at her in the background and like they they blended her in pretty well. There was a lot of like uh, if we're gonna talk technical stuff. The 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 lensing on this and the 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 depth of field was just like yeah. Like well, that's I I bizarre. I, I saw because Zack Snyder wrote this and going into this, I was like, oh, Zack Snyder should never write his movies. No. The the few that he's written of his are not. Good. The ones that he hasn't written tend to be better, like the original Dawn of the not the original, but his Dawn of the Dead was of course James Gunn. So I saw that, and then it said director of photography, Zack Snyder. And I was like, has he ever done that before as well? So I looked it up, this is the only feature that he's the cinematographer for. So now going into movies, Zack Snyder should never write his own movies, and he should never be his own cinematographer. Because this entire movie has the the shallowest depth of field imaginable to the point where it's like disorienting and yeah. claustrophobic in a way that doesn't work. These Canon dream lenses that I got off of eBay, it was made, I believe in the 1960s, by a Japanese lens maker, and then rebuilt them in these cinema housings. Part of the thing I love about them is there's a lot of flaws. In the dark scenes, in the zombie scenes, it gives you this great quality where, unless it's right there and it's right in front of you, it gets mysterious and creepy pretty quickly as things fall off. Well, the, it is, the movie was shot digitally. I looked it up, it's the first movie that he's done that hasn't been shot. On film. on film, aside oh, okay. from the horrible Justice League ending, the post-apocalyptic nightmare right, world, right. that was done digitally too, and well, that uh, also looks like ass. So, <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah, I, I, when I watch these movies now, I'm like, okay, you know, where's the where's the the line? Where's the where's the green screen placed? Right? Because obviously, it's all digital matte paintings. It's not just real. They didn't really destroy Las Vegas casinos and create a, a destroyed background. Uh, you, you know, you got people walking around and there's, eh, there's a car with some rocks on it. Eh. <laughs> and then everything and then else is digital. like a street light and then they pan the camera up. I'm like, oh, all right, right there, that's where they put this little, little green screen and then they everything else just, yeah. Which is, which is how they make movies now, I get that. They're not gonna build these gigantic sets, but I, I just think, I think that's where my brain goes when I get bored. I just start to deconstruct the visual of the film. I'm like, okay, you know, this is a set, this part's real, this part's not, this person's really there, they shot this later. Yeah. And it, and it just all looked like, it just looked like a big, cheap movie. That's, um, that's what I wanted to say, is that the, the shallow depth of field makes the whole thing look cheap in a way that I'm sure it wasn't intended to. It looks like if you've ever watched like tech reviews on YouTube, like when people review like a new camera or a new lens and they shoot their like test footage, mm. where they shoot like a duck in a pond, and they have the, the depth of field as shallow as possible to show what the camera, bull, camera is capable of. Right. This whole movie looked like that. It, it just looked like they were trying to like fix everything possible. So maybe he did a really bad job with the, the, the lensing of the movie. His first uh, digital uh, cinematography. Uh, yeah, yeah, he just like screwed it up. I mean, Zack Snyder's a, a competent technical uh, yeah, filmmaker, I, I regardless know. of how you feel about his movies, which is why the decision to do that is so baffling. You know how like a really clever, low budget filmmaker can, who knows a, just a ton about computers, can really stretch it? Sure. That's what this felt like to me, with the muzzle, the digital muzzle flares. I, I was thinking like really good fan film, when yes. you see like, yeah. Not, yeah. not like an old shitty fan film, but like the more recent ones that right. people do. Yeah, right. it felt like that. Right, where someone can really do computer VFX stuff really well. And they shoot the whole movie in their garage on a green screen, and it doesn't look like shit. They, mm -hmm. they, they're able to incorporate the actors into digital environments and make it look really good. 
Um, but, you know, some parts eh, don't quite, you know, blur them out a little around. And, and that just kept sticking out to me because I wasn't um, engaged in the story. I'm just being honest. I'm just giving my <laughs> well, I would opinion. hope so. Well, I, I don't dislike the man Zack Snyder. I don't, I'm, I'm not hating on him. Because everyone's going to say that. <laughs> you know, I, we're just, we're looking at the movie. And I'm, I'm saying the movie, the script, the script is, is terrible. I, I would say the script is competent, but it's never engaging. It's, it's it lacks, it's, it's such a great, like, uh, it's a fun premise. I was disappointed. We have the opening credit montage showing the zombies taking over and the, you know, the city turning to chaos. Like I wanted that to be the movie. Yeah. Zombies invading Las Vegas, but it's just a quick montage at the beginning and then everything is post that. And it almost doesn't even matter that it's in Las Vegas because they utilize it so little. There's like a big shootout in a casino near the end. And they're obviously robbing the safe that's underneath the casino, but that doesn't even have to be a casino, story-wise. There's well, so little about it being in Vegas that matters. Right, right. Yes, exactly. Um, it, it, the, the fall of Las Vegas would have been the fun part, but mm -hmm. that would have probably upped the budget yeah. $150 million. I, I looked up the budget. It's like $90 million, which is pretty cheap pretty. for a movie like this. Yeah. yeah. This movie should be called Army of the Dead Pixel. Let's talk about that. The unfortunate thing is I can't visually represent this very well. I put the movie into my editing timeline, but that version of the movie is, is already compressed, so it, it doesn't show up as well, but trust us. Watch this on a 4K TV. You'll, you'll, you'll see the it. goddamn dead pixel. I wrote down the scenes I saw it in, too. It's there. They must have shot this. I thought So first I thought it was my TV. I was like, there's a fucking... De I've never seen a dead pixel in a big mainstream movie like this. So I did some looking around and other things on Netflix. It wasn't there. So it's this movie and it'll cut to another shot and it won't be there. Right. So they must have shot it on more than one camera. Right. Um, which makes sense. Okay, so when they're talking to the safe guy and the safe guy's like, I need 30 minutes, you know, like, do you know what kind of safe this is? If, if, if I fuck up one more time, the safe will lock forever, blah, 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 blah. And I keep cutting to it and there's a couple of different cameras that are running. Yeah. And then some other scenes happen and eventually we cut back and he's listening and he's turning the, the set and that's when you see it again. Yeah. So it's clearly they shot all those scenes for the safe. Yeah. They uh, filmed all those scenes together with a couple of different cameras and the one camera had a dead pixel in it. Mm -hmm. Microscopic white dot, but in a dark, dingy, ugly movie. Well, that's why the first time I noticeable. saw it was the, the aliens scene where they're putting down the glow sticks, you know, and there's oh, like the right. aliens on each side of them. <laughs> Yeah, that's the first time I noticed it. And that's when I was like, am I going crazy? So I, I noticed it there, but then it would cut to a different shot and it wasn't there. So I was like, okay, that must be the other camera. Yes. And, th and that's the interesting thing is I, th uh, it is a camera issue. Yeah. Because I thought maybe it's some kind of weird process that happened when they encoded it for Netflix. That's, well, that was my first thought. But then when it's cutting between shots and, and it's, it's there and it's not shot, there. Yeah. And, and it must be, because what an easy fix. In the editing bay, it's like, okay, I gotta paint out one pixel. Yeah. Uh, I'm, the, the whole movie is rotoscoped around every character. <laughs> uh, I, I have 11 to 20 shots from a specific camera where there's a dead pixel. There's a couple of them. There's one main one that's there every time that camera is yeah. used, but then there's a couple more on each side of it. There's like two or three more, but there's one main one. Part of the thing I love about him is there's a lot of flaws. The premise, real quick, right? Um, the movie opens with an annoying sequence. With bad dialogue. That goes on for, for way too long mm -hmm. for a setup, right? A guy and a gal have gotten married in Las Vegas, the, the big cliche. They're leaving Vegas, and she wants to give him what is called Roadhead. And this this was originally a scene with James Franco, um, but he was recast. And they digitally replaced him with this other guy. Oh, okay. Um, and and uh, is that funny? Is that, I don't, <laughs> does anyone get that joke? I, Everyone's already forgotten about James Franco. He went, he went back to Oz. 
I don't know. Uh, uh, listen, listen here, Jay. I'm listening. Uh, and so then you cut back. We're cutting back and forth, and back and forth between them, and then this this military convoy. And with, you're just like, okay, get to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, to yeah. It. And they're but they're having dialogue, and clever dialogue, back and forth, back and forth. And what if the thing we're carrying in the back of our truck is, you know, what? Why we need all this firepower to protect it? Could be anything from a briefcase nuke to the original copy of the Constitution. Movie We're reference. coming from, a from Area 51, you know. Oh. No, I don't. What are you talking about? Seeing as we're just coming from, uh, well, you know. So, saying there's a chance. Chance of what? Chance we're hauling a, well, you know. Yeah. And it just keeps going. Yeah. And the performances are bad, too. It's not just the dialogue. But uh, the, the, they crash the car, the cars crash, the, the little truck uh, cargo thing falls over, and then for no reason at all, the door latches open. And then it came loose in the, the, the fall. Yeah, so, and the guy's on the phone. And he's like, hey, what's going on? What should we do? The cargo has been open. And she goes, oh, get the fuck out of there. Something. Not close. Close the door. Close the goddamn door. All right. Close the fucking doors. We close the fucking doors. Where's Cameron Mitchell? Close the <laughs> fucking door. He's, he's never there she when you said, need him. Uh, whoever you are, lady, there's a lady on the phone, mm -hmm. and she, he's like, "Our car, the cargo door is—it's not compromised completely. It's just the door open." Oh, Look. and their convoy that's carrying this thing is called the Four Horsemen. Ah, you, yes, that's do you right. Get it? I wrote that down in my notes. Four Horsemen, and then they look right at the cameras bring, and say it. Bring in the apocalypse. That's a deep cut reference, Jay. That nobody knows to that, the Bible. Yeah. It's a deep cut. Nobody's ever heard of the Four Horsemen um, of the apocalypse. And, that's why it's so clever. Don't don't call your secret military convoy the Four Horsemen. That's like calling your. Uh, this is Operation Pandora's Box. <laughs> Everybody, who wants to join up? Um, don't call it that. And so the 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 premise, which we discover later in the film, is, and I kid you not, it's taken with all seriousness. The government and or the private sector military. Operations wants to create a zombie army. The old cliche, we can use that monster as a weapon, hence your aliens. We, we have our Paul Reiser character Paul in this movie. Not yeah. in the film, but there's a guy who is Paul Reiser. Yes. Fuck! Open this door! What are you doing? I was very briefly hoping for some sort of subversion <laughs> where, because they, they, they're going into the city with him, with that guy in their group. And they're like, you know, that guy, he's going to betray us. We should just fucking kill him. I wish they would have. If they, because he's so obviously going to be the Paul Riser. Like, if they just shot him or something, that would have been fun. Well, there, that's, that's like the, 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 the for introduction to Tig Notaro's character. You always have that scene at the beginning of the movies where you get the the group together and you got to convince them. Like, I'm not going back there, man. But they go to Tig Notaro and she's like, yeah, sure, I'll do it for money. And then she just awkwardly walks away. We are putting together a crew for a job. Yeah, what does it pay? We make $2 million for one day's work. $2 million. But That's my share. That's just for me. 100% I'm in. Yeah. You don't want to know, you know, the risks or why would I want to know the risks? Like that was amusing. That, that, that scene worked. And so I was hoping there'd be maybe a little bit more of that type of stuff. The, the, that's what I mean is like uh, very bad predictable script and uh, like s lazy, sloppy and just bad all around. It just, it wanted to be clever and it just wasn't. Yeah. And, and it had, it had the, the perfect groundwork for a fun, clever movie about zombies yeah. in Las Vegas. I mean, uh, when I compared the two movies, 1978's Dawn of the Dead and Ocean's Eleven, I kind of feel like, and we'll say Aliens. So it's these three films, right? Yes. 1978, Dawn of the Dead. That's a movie that is about a lot of other things other than the zombies. Right. And, and to me, the fun part of that movie is uh, it's a procedural movie, kind of like. Oh yeah, we did a whole review about that. Yeah, it's um, it's you know not focused on the zombies. Of course, they're in it, but it's like what what if you're in a zombie 
apocalypse and you hole up in a shopping mall. What do you do? Well, you gotta block the entrances, you gotta make sure you got food, you gotta you know, go through all these steps. And the movie just goes through that in like painstaking detail and almost like real time. Yeah. And that, that's the fun part about that movie. And then you got something like Ocean's Eleven where you have this crack team where everybody has their specialty and they all have to perform a job and all these things go wrong and they have to, they have to um, pivot along the way and, and react. Right. The, and this had those, but neither of them. <laughs> it was just a dumb, blunt movie where none of the characters were clever mm -hmm. and they all had that kind of annoying quality to them where they, they need to give them a gimmick. Like the safe cracker guy. When the uh, spoilers, uh. but at the very end of the movie, we have the, the heartfelt emotional scene between Dave Batista and his daughter. They've reunited, they've reconnected, and now she has to put him down because he's turned into a zombie. And that happens, and I was like, oh good, the movie's over. But then other guy on their team comes out with all the money. He got put in the and safe. I legitimately, for a moment, I was like, who? I forgot about that guy entirely because he has no personality. Uh, I did not forget about that guy because I remember that scene. I'm, I'm assuming that whole ending, much like the, the Zack Snyder Justice League ending, is just like self-indulgent, like set up for another movie. Well, it's clearly it's like, a set up for a sequel, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can have those endings to movies where they're not really a set up for a sequel, but they do have that like, oh, this is going to keep going kind uh, of quality. Yeah, yeah. This just felt like blunt. We're going to make another one. It's not over yet, kids. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, then, then that's the... Stupid ticking clock element in the plot is they're gonna nuke Las Vegas. I, I was fine with them having that. It's something. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it was like once the premise fell apart, they're not getting the money. Now it's just then it just kind of devolves into survival. It's like Aliens. Yeah, where it's like Newt and and Ripley or Dave Batista and his daughter. They even go up on a rooftop. They, they even have a character uh, blow himself up to, to save everybody That's else. That's true, yeah. yeah. And uh, they think, when they think Bishop left them, Bishop, God damn you! Bishop, God damn you! She left us. God damn it. Yeah. Would it have been too obvious that he was ripping off aliens if that monster man, like, appeared on the roof? Well, he did appear on the roof. No, he did, but before the helicopters revealed. Oh, they come out on the roof and they stand around, and then they hear the chopper blades, and then the helicopter comes up, and they're like, oh, she didn't. That was an unintentional laugh. They're up on the roof, and it's dead silence. Yeah. Wait, you guys, you guys hear that? And then she says, do you hear something? And then immediately, like, if the, pl if the, the helicopter was right below the top of the... The building, you'd hear it? You could hear a chopper from like 60 <laughs> miles away. <laughs> but it's dead side. I know that's a movie yeah, thing. It's a movie thing. But it was, it, at, at that point in the movie, it made yeah. me laugh. It wasn't a, a surprise like the silent space, spaceship that Bishop was flying. <laughs> but that was the thing. It's like, the, that's tension is Ripley and and Newt make it out onto the roof and Bishop has left. Mm -hmm. And there's also going to be a nuclear explosion. Um, and then the, the queen alien comes out of the door. The queen alien is a little more she says, awesome and intimidating than the zombie king in this movie. She says, close your eyes, baby. Because they're about to get mauled the fuck up by the queen alien. And then yeah. here, comes, here comes Bishop. Oh my God, he didn't leave. <laughs> Tension. <laughs> release but the tig is not there two seconds later she's there oh she's there then can, uh, can we call him conan the zombarian <laughs> and 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 his uh his his lady friend she roar <laughs> was she supposed to be dressed like a like a uh, um like a showgirl what was what the fuck was she wearing? I don't know. I think it was just supposed to be like evoke the feeling of like an Amazonian queen, so yeah, some sort of royalty. But, but it, she's a zombie. But it would make sense if if she was dressed like uh, extravagantly, yeah, flamboyantly, like she had the tiara. Well, again, something. we see topless showgirls, zombies at the beginning of the movie. That's true. We do during the opening credit sequence, which is the fun Las Vegas stuff that they abandoned for the rest of the movie. Yeah. So. 
Mars Attacks. Now that's a fun Las Vegas. Oh one. yeah, they really utilize Vegas in that. And Washington, D.C., they utilize all sorts of cities in that movie. Right, right. The part when they knock over the Washington Monument and they're like moving it around to make sure it lands on people. <laughs> yes, yes, That's yes. That's good stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Many, 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 many scenes felt way too long. Oh yeah. Uh, There's no reason for this movie to be two and a half hours. No. If I could highlight one specific moment when Paul Reiser's character, aka man with sunglasses working for the bad guy, gets his comeuppance as he should mm -hmm. um, when he does everything that Paul Reiser did in Aliens. <laughs> lock everybody out. He literally locks the door on Ripley yeah. and everybody. Get us out of here! Burn, open it! Then gets fucking killed by an alien, yeah. right? And how did they, how did James Cameron shoot that? Alien sneaks up behind him. Fuck, here comes thing. Done? Yeah. What happens to this guy, Jay? Damn it. Needed was oh yeah, it goes on forever. All we needed was done. Yeah, you know the conclusion. Yeah, you know he's gonna get it from that tiger that he he expressed dismay for earlier on in the film. Don't you think that scene with Paul Reiser would have been better though if we we saw his his head fall apart for five minutes in no, the shot? No, eleven minutes of struggle. Eleven minutes of struggling, sure, and fighting the alien back and forth. It goes on and on. And he scratches him. For and no reason. Other than Zack Snyder thought it looked cool, I guess. I, that's that's all the things. There's a lot of things wrong with this movie. Holy shit, are you kidding me? That really scared me. <laughs> you really scared me, you shithead. Are you gonna help me up or what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, this is where it gets kind of weird and confusing. Vegas is a zombie land. Yes. They surround it with shipping containers to contain all the zombies, right? And it's a big debate in Washington, D.C. on what we should do. They build a wall. They build I a don't wall. Know if this is an attempt at social commentary. And there is a, there is like a. a concept, kids in, uh, in camp, yeah. Yeah, uh, a, a, a detainment camp. Um, it's not so much social commentary as it is Zack Snyder saying, these are things that happen. In the world. And this is a thing that happens in the world. I and saw it on the news. Basic people are held as prisoners because they were too close to the zombie action and they may be infected. Yeah. Oh, that's another current event thing is they, they uh, do the, right. uh, what you call it, to their heads to detect their temperature. And poor old me thought there would be a clever twist with that. Nope. I got to check your temperature. Yeah. Okay, you check my temperature, bitch. What? What? Oh, I wasn't holding the temperature gun. You know, it's clear setup yeah, for some kind of sure. switcheroo, whether it was clever or an accident, you know, whatever. Clear setup for that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, Dave Bautista's daughter is not a, a, a person being held at the camp. She yeah, is she's a, a volunteer. volunteer yeah. And she befriends a lady and her daughter. And blonde lady, um, she's almost like a coyote. She uh, smuggles people yeah. out of the camp through the city. Uh, and then they end up being captured by Conan the Zombarian. For what reason? They are held in the penthouse suite. Why do they kill and eat some people but hold some hostage? What do they have to gain from having hostages? Uh, my, my initial suspicions were perhaps, uh, which would make sense, and I don't know if this is in the film at all or implied whatsoever or even thought of, but uh, <laughs> they would steal women of childbearing age so mm. that they could make more zombie army babies. Oh, that's pretty gross. <laughs> Oh, 
But make more zombie army for what purpose? What is the goal of this army, this titular army of the dead? It's an, it's an army that's gonna take over the world. Even though they've never explicitly said that that's their goal. Okay. And they don't seem to have the intelligence to formulate that kind of plan. Yeah. They probably don't even know what exists outside <laughs> of the shipping containers. <laughs> Uh, so, case in point, uh, uh, Dave Batista's daughter wants to join the mercenary crew hired by businessman to go get the money because she wants to get in there to find her friend. Yeah. And then Dave Batista says, no, you're not going. And she says, yes, I am. And he says, okay. I'm going in either way. And I'll probably die. Some of these people are going to die. This is life and death. Remember the Ripley daughter subplot? That's why she gravitated towards Newt. Yeah, I think I think there was a, I think there was an algorithm, or a template, that Zack Snyder used to write this script. Yeah, it's called the Alien script. You don't see them fucking each other over for a goddamn percentage. You don't see them fucking each other over. I mean, uh, there's a couple of reference. There's a Star Wars reference. I don't know if you caught it. Oh uh, well, the sound effects. Okay. Yeah, the classic Lucasfilm sound effects. But what does Tig Notaro say when she walks out onto the roof and sees the helicopter? What a hunk of junk. What a piece of junk. Can we get a Tig Notaro movie vehicle? Sure. Just called Tig Notaro. <laughs> Tig Notaro does stuff. What if she replaced Dave Tig Batista in this movie? Tig she, what if she played the lead? I would love it. Zack Snyder would never do that because he loves his, his buff dudes, but... Give Tig Notaro the lead in a movie like this. That alone would change the entire dynamic. Uh, uh, okay, so you have Tig Notaro, right? And uh, she, uh, she's just like, oh God, oh God, my house, it's being foreclosed on. <laughs> and he, uh, she's trying to run a mechanic shop. Mm -hmm. she's, a, she's a helicopter pilot. We'll keep her the same character. Sure. And then she gets this offer and, and it's, it's going to be very dangerous. But there's $200 million in the safe. Uh, all right. She has zero, zero interest. The, the, the Bill Murray Ghostbusters effect? Yes, yes. Just kind of distant from the material? She's distant from, from everything that's going on, and she's, she's kind of half-heartedly, like, recruiting people. And, like, most of them just, just say no. <laughs> all, right. all right. I'll try you again next week, but if, I, if you don't answer, that, that means... Uh, that, that's a firm no if you don't answer. <laughs> All right, see you later. It's just scene after scene, her just showing up to people. <laughs> How much money? Eh, a lot. <laughs> There's gonna be zombies everywhere. <laughs> and then it just, it's just her going in. By herself? Yeah. <laughs> it just ends up being, yeah, maybe I know, no one shows up to the rallying <laughs> point. And then I, I can just picture her going, ah, oh, I guess I gotta do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's the whole movie. What the? Two things I've noticed, small things that I noticed. Um, uh, when they open up the vault, the money vault, there's a ton of film canisters. Reference to something. I don't know. What is that a reference to? I don't know. Oh, I think. <laughs> Maybe it's a print, print uh, reels from Dawn of the Dead that or what if it's, depending on when this was shot, if this was made before the whole Justice League Snyder Cut happened, what if that was an inside little joke, like there's the Snyder Cut? And then also I noticed, well, I don't know if it's a mistake, but probably should have been a retake, or maybe they used a bad take. Uh, this is how bored it was. Uh, there's a shot where they open up a door to go, I think it's when they go into the safe and Dave Batista holds up his flashlight and it's on and then he turns it off and then he goes back and turns it back on. The actor didn't know if it was on or not. Because, and they realized it was on, oh, it's supposed to be off here. And then he turned and then it. it's supposed to be off and then I turn it on. Hmm. But he lifted it up and it was on like they had done multiple takes and it was in the off, on, off, on kind of situation. Huh. In the take. I think, I think the editor was asleep at the wheel. <laughs> Just letting dead pixels go by, <laughs> letting mistakes actors make. What a piece of junk. 
I notice details, Jay. That's, that's well, that's, that's, that's what you start to focus on when you're not engaged by a story. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, none of these things matter if it's, a, if it's a good movie and a good story that you're interested in. I'm, for 30 years, I never noticed that Stormtrooper bumped his head on the top of the door because <laughs> my thought was, oh no, R2-D2 and C-3PO, the Stormtroopers are coming inside. Or the, or the little kid pointing at his crotch at the end of Back to the Future 3. Right. <laughs> I didn't know that existed until the internet. Because you're, you're you're watching Doc Brown. Yeah. And this and is the conclusion to their story. Doc Brown is a time traveling locomotive. Mm -hmm. And he's there with Mary Steenburgen. And they have two little boys. Look at this. Wow. I, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. It's the magic of movies. And meanwhile, a six year old is, is, is pointing at his junk <laughs> and going like this. Has anyone tracked that kid down and like asked him about that now as an adult? I, I don't know. What the hell is that? I, I really don't know. But uh, yeah, I think this, this movie felt sloppy. It felt kind of cheap. Uh, and it, it, it lacks fun. It lacks cleverness. It lacks excitement. It lacks interest. <laughs> lacks connection with any character. Uh, it, at least it's not overly like annoying. No, that's why at the beginning I said I didn't hate it. Like I thought it was completely watchable because yeah, it wasn't like irritating to sit through. Yeah, like, nobody was these... obnoxious or cringy. The, yeah, the, the safe yeah. cracker guy was. I don't know. There was like sort of cringy stuff. He was screaming like a girl, and mm -hmm. he was a little kind of an annoying character. <laughs> So, Mike, would you recommend Army of the Dead Pixels? <laughs> no! Don't watch any movies. Maybe watch that Angelina Jolie movie so they can make some of their money back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Why do you feel bad for them? I don't know. I don't know, know who made that movie. They're probably a pervert. <laughs> A sex pest. They're probably a sex pest. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, this this is overly long. That, that's why I would say if you're gonna watch it, if you have Netflix, just watch up to well, watch the opening credit sequence because that's the fun Vegas stuff, and then watch the first Tignataro scene, and just assume, just stop it there, and just be like, oh, that's the end of the movie. Yeah. Tignataro saying, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Yeah. Awkwardly, and then on her green screen, walking away. And that's the end of the movie. Now, do you think if they had filled in all those pixels, it would be a better movie? Because we are missing some, some of the film. That's true. We're missing 0.02% of Ooh. the film. Oh, uh, well, i throw a couple more zeros in there. <laughs> maybe, maybe about 700 zeros. <laughs> <laughs> but but just a thought, you know. Hey, if you we could we could have missed some very important information in that pixel. There is there is literally information missing in the film. Yeah. So had we filled it, filled there was a the clever plot twist in that pixel. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see it. There are some jokes, <laughs> some character development, all in those pixels. A whole James Gunn script was in there. Yeah. And we'll never see it now so because of that. Through those pixels. That that uh, dead pixel that I guess nobody noticed. Do you think Zack Snyder is a fan of Swiss cheese? <laughs> <laughs> His cameraman is. <laughs> That's not funny at all. <laughs>